Everyone asks the same question, how long should I fast? 12 hours, 16, maybe 24 or beyond. But here's what nobody tells you. Your body doesn't care about your fasting app timer. It's running its own biological clock, one that evolution programmed millions of years ago. At 12 hours, something shifts. At 16 hours, a switch flips. At 24 hours, your cells start cleaning house. And at 48 hours, that's when things get extraordinary. Today, we're going inside your body's fasting timeline, hour by hour, to reveal exactly what's happening at each stage. Because the real question isn't how long you should fast. It's what do you want your body to do? Quick note before we dive in, fit this. Is educational content not medical advice? If you have any health conditions, talk to your doctor before trying any fasting protocol. Now here's something fascinating. Over two to five hundred years ago, a Greek philosopher named Pythagoras, the same mathematician who gave us the Pythagorean theorem, fasted for 40 days before his examinations at the famous Alexandria School. He noticed such a dramatic increase in mental clarity and physical strength that he later required his own students to fast before receiving his advanced teachings. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, prescribed fasting as treatment for various ailments. Ancient Greek Olympic athletes fasted as part of their training regimen, believing it sharpened their performance and focus. Different eras, different cultures, but they all discovered the same thing. Now modern science is finally explaining why. So let's go inside your body's fasting timeline, hour by hour, and discover what these ancient philosophers knew instinctively, but couldn't explain. The first 12 hours are what I call the warm-up phase. After your last meal, your digestive system gets to work. It takes about four to six hours to fully process what you've eaten. During this time, glucose from your food floods your bloodstream and insulin rises to shuttle that energy into your cells. But once digestion completes, things start to shift. Your blood glucose from that last meal begins to deplete. Your body needs a steady supply of energy, so it turns to its backup system glycogen stored in your liver. Think of glycogen as a mini backup battery. It's your immediate reserve there, just in case. As the hours tick by, insulin levels start declining. Your body is transitioning. It's not quite burning fat yet, but it's getting ready. You're on the on-ramp to the highway. Not there yet, but approaching the entrance. Here's the thing most people miss. If you eat throughout your waking hours, Breakfast, snacks, lunch, more snacks, dinner, maybe a late night bite. Your body never gets past bust this phase. The metabolic switch never gets a chance to flip. You stay permanently in storage mode, running on glucose, never tapping into your fat reserves. Most people never even reach the 12 hour mark. And that's a missed opportunity. But this is just the warm up. Now let's talk about what happens between hour 12 and 16. This is where things get interesting. By this point, your glycogen stores are significantly depleted. Your liver has been releasing glucose to keep your blood sugar stable, but those reserves are running low. Insulin drops to baseline levels. And your body faces a decision. It needs fuel. Glucose is running out. So it does something remarkable. It flips a switch. Dr. Mark Matson, a neuroscientist at Johns Hopkins University, has studied intermittent fasting for over 25 years. His research team coined the term metabolic switch to describe this exact moment. When your body transitions from burning glucose, kuhum, burning fat. In a landmark paper, Matson and his colleagues showed that this switch typically occurs between 12 and 36 hours after your last meal, depending on how much glycogen your liver had stored. For most people, eating a standard diet, it happens somewhere around the 12 to 16 hour mark. Here's how to visualize it. Your body has two fuel tanks. Glucose is like regular gasoline. 
It's your default fuel, easy to access burns quickly. Fat is like reserve diesel. It's stored away, takes more effort to access, but there's a lot more of it. Around hour 12 to 16, you run out of regular gas and your engine switches to diesel. Insulin plays a crucial role here. Think of insulin as a traffic cop standing at an intersection. When insulin is high, which happens after you eat, it holds up a red light. Fat stays locked in storage. No exit allowed. But when insulin drops during fasting, green light. Fat flows out of your cells and into your bloodstream where it gets converted into energy. This is why 16th or 8 intermittent fasting works. You're not just skipping breakfast. You're giving your body enough time to flip that metabolic switch and start tapping into fat reserves. Even if you never fast longer than 16 hours, you're still triggering this fundamental shift. That's powerful. And here's what Matson's research revealed that surprised even scientists' ketones, the molecules your liver produces when burning fat, aren't just a backup fuel. Evidence suggests they may actually be the preferred fuel for both your brain and body during periods without food. Your body isn't struggling in fasting mode. It's optimizing. But here's where things get even more fascinating. Between our 16 and 24, fat burning deepens significantly. Ketone production ramps up. Your liver is now in full production mode, churning out these alternative fuel molecules. And something else happens. Something that addresses the number one fear people have about fasting. Growth hormone surges. Studies show that during a 24-hour fast growth hormone can increase up to fivefold, five times your normal baseline. Why does this matter? Think of growth. Hormone as your body's insurance policy. It sends a clear message to your muscles. Don't worry, we're burning fat, not you. This isn't starvation mode. This is optimization mode. Your body isn't stupid. It knows muscle is valuable, essential for survival. So when food becomes scarce, it doesn't cannibalize lean tissue first. It protects it. Growth hormone rises specifically to preserve muscle while your body burns through fat reserves. This is an evolutionary adaptation millions of years in the making. Ancient humans didn't eat three meals a day plus snacks. They went through natural cycles of feast and famine. Those whose bodies preserved muscle during lean times survived to hunt another day. Those whose bodies broke down muscle first didn't pass on their genes. You're the descendant of survivors, and your body still carries that programming. By this point, you might also notice something else. Mental clarity. Ketones don't just fuel your muscles. They cross the blood-brain barrier and feed your neurons directly. Think of ketones as premium gasoline for your brain. Cleaner burning, steadier energy, no crashes. That mental sharpness people describe during fasting, it's not placebo. It's pure chemistry. Ancient hunters needed sharp minds to track prey while hungry. Your brain in fasting mode is returning to that primal alertness. It's working harder, faster and smarter because that's exactly what evolution designed it to do. Pythagoras wasn't imagining things when he noticed improved mental clarity. He just didn't have the science to explain it. Now we do. And now around hour 24, something Nobel Prize worthy begins. In 2016, Japanese cell biologist Yoshinori Osumi won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for discovering the mechanisms of a process called autophagy. The word comes from Greek. Auto means self. Phagy means eating. Self-eating. Sounds alarming, but it's actually one of the most elegant survival mechanisms your body possesses. Here's what Osumi discovered. Working with simple baker's yeast in the early 1990s, he identified 15 essential genes that control this cellular recycling process. 
When cells are deprived of nutrients, they don't just sit idle. They activate a sophisticated cleanup system. Damaged proteins. Broken down and recycled. Malfunctioning mitochondria. Eliminated. Cellular waste and debris. Cleared out and repurposed for energy. Think of autophagy as your cells hiring Marie Kondo. They start cleaning house. Throwing out broken furniture, recycling, old parts, making room for new. It's not destruction. It's renewal. Your body has its own built-in detox system. No juice cleanse required. It just needs time to activate. And the implications are profound. This is why fasting has been linked to longevity and reduced risk of diseases like Alzheimer's, diabetes and certain cancers. Autophagy clears out the cellular junk that accumulates over time. The rogue proteins, the dysfunctional components, the debris that contributes to aging and disease. Every hour you stay in this state, you're giving your system a deep internal cleanse. Osumi's discovery opened entirely new fields in understanding how our cells maintain themselves, how aging works and how we might prevent disease at the most fundamental level all from studying humble yeast cells. Now to be clear, this is where fasting gets more serious. If you're going beyond 24 hours, especially for the first time, pay attention to how you feel. Hydration becomes crucial. Electrolytes, sodium, potassium, magnesium, play a vital role in keeping your heart rhythm stable and your energy levels balanced. This is territory where listening to your body matters. Normal hunger is expected. Feeling extremely weak, dizzy, confused or experiencing heart palpitations. That's different. That's your body telling you something is off. If something feels seriously wrong, not just hunger but wrong, stop. Your body is communicating. Listen to it. But what if you push even further? Beyond 48 hours, you enter deep territory. Autophagy reaches peak levels. Your cells are in full cleanup mode. And something else begins to happen. Research from the University of Southern California has shown that extended fasting can trigger immune system regeneration. Old damaged white blood cells get cleared out. Stem cells activate to generate fresh ones. It's like hitting a reset button on your immune system. Some studies suggest this can help cancer patients recover immune function after chemotherapy. The body's regenerative capacity, given enough time and the right conditions, is remarkable. Your gut begins preparing for renewal. Inflammation markers continue to drop. The body enters a state of deep repair that few people ever experience. But here's the reality check. Beyond 48 hours, the benefits are real but so are the risks. Electrolyte imbalances become more likely. Without proper management, muscle loss can occur. Your organs experience stress. This isn't something to attempt casually or without guidance. If you're considering fasts, this long work with a healthcare professional. Get your blood work monitored. Understand what you're doing. Your body is capable of extraordinary things but it also deserves respect. And remember, fasting isn't for everyone. If you're pregnant breastfeeding, have an eating disorder, are diabetic, or have other health conditions, this isn't for you without medical supervision. So after all this science, all these mechanisms, all these milestones, what have we learned? Your body isn't counting hours the way your app does. It's running a sophisticated biological program, one that unfolds in stages. At 12 hours, the warm-up begins. Glycogen starts depleting. You're approaching the starting line. At 16 hours, the metabolic switch flips. Insulin drops. Fat burning begins. Ketones start flowing. At 24 hours, growth hormone surges to protect muscle. Mental clarity sharpens and cellular cleanup activates the Nobel Prize winning process of autophagy. At 48 hours and beyond, deep regeneration becomes possible.
immune system renewal, stem cell activation, profound repair. Each milestone triggers different mechanisms. Each hour unlocks different benefits. The question was never, how long should you fast? The question is, what do you want your body to do? Want to tap into fat-burning mode? 16 hours might be enough. Want cellular cleanup and autophagy? You'll need to push past 24. Want deep regeneration that requires time preparation and respect for your limits? Pythagoras knew it. Hippocrates prescribed it. Ancient Olympic athletes trained with it. And now modern science. From Johns Hopkins research to Nobel Prize discoveries, is confirming what humans have intuited for millennia. Your body has intelligence we're only beginning to understand. Fasting doesn't weaken you. It reveals how much strength you already had. Here's what I want to know. What's the longest you've ever fasted? Drop your number in the comments. I'm genuinely curious where most of you land. And here's a debate for you. Some say 16-8 is enough for everyone. Others say you need 24 hours or more for real results. Based on what you just learned about the biological timeline, which camp are you in? Tell me in one word what surprised you most about your body's fasting timeline. Mine would be autophagy. If this changed, how you think about fasting, subscribe for more science that reveals what your body is truly capable of. And if you know someone who's been confused about how long they should fast, send them this video. They'll finally understand why different lengths do different things. Next up, what actually happens when you break a fast and why the first meal matters more than you think.